Hello, I'm Jeremy. And I'm Mandy. Welcome to the latest edition of our Talk Death video series, where you get the chance to ask experts your questions about all things death and dying. Without further ado, let's welcome Melissa Unfred, aka the Modern Mortician, and Kermit the Grief Therapy Dog. Hey guys. Hi. Hey, Kermit. <laughs> Hi, He's here. Kermit. Hi, Kermit. <laughs> so our follower, Hey Wolfpack on Instagram wants to know, what training did you and Kermit go through to qualify for that type of grief therapy? This is actually a really good question because I'm going to touch on some of those non-grief therapy dogs that are out there. So when Kermit, before he turned a year old, we went through the canine good citizenship training. Basically, I found a lady on the Nextdoor app uh, that was in the neighborhood that used to show dogs, and I paid her as a trainer one-on-one -on -one to train me to get him through his basics. And so from the time I adopted him at four months old, we worked on that um, until he was 11 months old. And that's when we were getting ready to join the Dog Alliance. We were looking at several different um, nonprofit groups to train with Divine Canines, Pet Partners, Therapy Dogs International. We chose the Dog Alliance because uh, some of their values were the same as mine. Um, I liked that they were involved in Bow Wow Reading. That's something that they do with kids. Um, and again, they were a nonprofit in the area. So we did his training as soon as he was a year old. That's when they allow dogs. So clue number one, one year of age is when they will allow you to begin the training to be a certified therapy animal. So people that are saying their two month old golden doodle is a therapy dog, it's a comfort animal. And we just want to use the right terminology here. So we're not misleading people. It's like, if I were to call Kermit a service dog, he's not a service dog. He does not perform medically related tasks for me. He is an emotional support animal first. And then secondly, he is a certified therapy dog. It was supposed to be a three month training course. It was clear a month and a half into this that Kermit was a natural and they gave us the option to like clep out of the test. So we got to take an early test. He passed it with flying colors. The test is extremely difficult in my opinion. Um, can you leave your dog in a room or in PetSmart and walk away from it out of its sight for three minutes without it leaving? If so, your dog may be able to be a certified therapy dog. Can you be out in public and have a drunk maniac approach you in a sombrero that's singing loudly and happily without your dog attacking, growling, or acting scared? If the answer is yes when they're on duty, then your dog could qualify to be a certified therapy dog. So lots of different tests, walking past hot dogs on the floor, um, meeting another dog, shaking somebody's hand. All this training is what they got us ready to be able to pass this test. And we did pass the test. And we were the first in Texas working in funeral care. So I decided to make it a platform. I want other funeral homes to do this, but I want you to do it the right way. So you can either go through the training with a dog that you have, or you can partner with a nonprofit in your area, just like the Dog Alliance, Pet Partners, Divine Canines, and have a trained therapy team come to your staff when they need it or to the funerals that request it. And then you're donating money to a nonprofit, you're involving the community, and you're giving back that way instead of running to the pet store or contacting a breeder and waiting six months for a dog to be born and then calling it a therapy dog. Does Kermit know when he's on duty or off duty? Yes. When he has his vest on, he's been trained to know that he's on duty. When he does not have his vest on, he acts very much like um, a teenage boy where he will look at me like, <laughs> and then do what he wants to. But yeah, when he has his, his vest on, he knows it's work time when I'm in a certain mood and um, things like that. He knows when it's time to pay attention and when he can be a pupper. There's been a lot, a lot, a lot of attention on therapy dogs in funeral homes now. And I feel like a lot. Now, granted, we idolized Lulu, which was a golden doodle when I first got into uh, getting professional, you know, five years ago, before I even had Kermit. That was a long term goal. I was like, wow, wouldn't it be great if I had a, a companion animal that could do something like that? And it it was luck of the draw that it happened this way. A therapist had encouraged me to get an emotional support animal. And so Kermit and I met and I was like, this is a dog you can talk to about death. And it just so happened that he passed the test. Um, if he hadn't passed the test, I wouldn't, you know, be on the soapbox. I'd be calling him a comfort animal. I mean, I could barely pass a hot dog on the floor. So, you know, <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Good job, Kermit. <laughs> Good job, Kermit. Good for him. Thank you.